Hey everybody, I'm back again with another video, so grab yourself a beverage, because I know I am, and let's get going with this review. So after you first take it out of the box, you're going to need to set this thing up. Now it's really simple, there's only really three things you need to plug in, and that is your Ethernet, network jack basically, and my setup is going to have a one gig uh, connection on it and that is what I would recommend if you can set it up that way if not you know 100 would work but that's what I'm gonna use and then of course you got the HDMI cable which is going to set up to any monitor and or television and then after that you just have to set up your USB storage if you want to and then plug in power so really simple to set up uh, kind of hard to go wrong. I'm going to be utilizing the SanDisk Ultra Fit. Um, it only cost me 30 bucks off Amazon, and that's 128 gigs of extra storage space. And I figured, why not? All right, now let's plug it into our USB 3.0 port, and uh, it should be easier than that. But it popped in, and there you go. That and I've just added 128 gigs of space. I'm gonna have to format it later, but it's pretty simple. I'll show you guys how to do that. And then you just get your HDMI cable in, and then you plug in your uh, network. I would recommend doing a hardwired connection because that is going to be your fastest solution. Wireless is good, but hardwire is better. All right, let's pop that sucker in there. Make sure all the connections are nice and tight. And now all we need is our power port. And it's USB type C, which means that finally you don't have to know which direction it's facing. You just plug it in. So since it's C, there's no wrong way to plug it in, which I like very much. I always hated the old connectors that you know were longer on the top than on the bottom, and you had to figure out which way it orientated, whether it was up or down. Oh yeah, down. We're ready to power this thing up and get going on the setup. So when it first boots up, it's going to show you this screen. It's going to basically show you how to turn on your remotes, and then it's going to ask you if you have an Android phone or tablet. Now I actually do have an Android phone but I wanted to set it up as if I didn't uh, just so that I could do it through the web browser and that way if you have an iPhone or if you just have a computer you could still set it up. It's not a problem. You just need a Google sign on which I have um, and then it gives you a code and you just have to type that code into the web page. So let's do that right now. So shot into Chrome real quick on my iPhone and just put in the address and then it's gonna say connect your TV you pop in that code and BAM it's how fast it works and then you just have to accept everything that they ask for so basically give your life away and uh, then it's gonna go through this screen and it's gonna tell you to reboot you have to hit A on the controller and it's going to reboot your box. And now it's updating your system. So it's going to take a minute. I have this thing on like eight times, I think, because it's going to take a while. Okay, it's going to reboot again. And there's that flashy start screen for Android. And now I'm into, I'm going to format my USB um, dongle there because I want to be able to utilize it for storage. So it's pretty easy to actually do that. You just have to go into the storage settings and just say that you want to utilize the USB for storage. And when you check mark that, it's going to 
allow you to do that. Now, there's also an option to go onto network storage. So if you have a NAS, um, which is network attached storage, or uh, a shared drive, you can utilize that too. Um, and then, of course, I just formatted my drive, and there you go. We're all into the system now. And you can see that there is just a buttload of things that you can click on. Now, those are just suggestions. Um, now, here's the other thing you got to update all your accessories. So, you got to update your joystick, you got to update your remote. And it's not a quick process, especially the remote. For some reason, it took a long time to upgrade the firmware on the remote. And I'm going to show you, and this is sped up and chopped into pieces. So I was sitting there for a good five minutes, maybe a little bit more. I mean, I, I got this at four times speed, and now it's done. And then I wanted to just check really quick, and because of all the ventilation, how hot the uh, unit ran because I was looking at it and it actually ran pretty cool and of course I'm installing some of my favorite apps Cody being one of them um, so you know when you first get this box you're gonna have to install a lot of the apps and you're gonna have to configure a lot of the stuff so it's gonna take a little while before you actually get it ready to go um, I think it took me like an hour to get everything downloaded and everything configured and all of my logons created and uh, file explorer is another one that's uh, really popular with this box and most Android boxes so as you can see there's there's a bunch of stuff installed here um, and I'm using the remote right now and I'm trying out the voice feature so if you click the microphone what's the weather like it today? will be listening Right now, always listening Today's is not incorpororated with the system. It's going to be, I think, believe a later update that they're going to have all of the home automation and everything incorporated. Uh, I started to look for that stuff and couldn't find it, and I read a little bit that that's at a, a later update. So I'm not going to configure that until that's out. But uh, as you can see, there's so many apps to choose from there's entertainment there's ABC CBS you can do stars you can do HBO um, so there's and Showtime ESPN so there's there is a plethora of stuff that you can do if you have it and if you're willing to set it up don't forget PBS that's a very good um, you know it has all the masterpiece theater and all of the specials and the documentaries I mean you know and then of course Cody which is the best app on the planet is also in there and it's native to the Play Store so I'm going to run it one time just to get it running and then I will show you guys how to actually install it on the shield so that you can get that going uh, and add it to your library of apps okay so first thing you're gonna wanna do is go to system so once you're in system you go to file manager and then you do add a source and then once you're in add a source you just have to add the address that I'm going to uh, put in the description and I'm also going to have it right here if you want to just hit pause there it is so once that's in there then you just give it a name I called it Fusion because it's just easy for re me to remember and uh, it will list it in your sources once you're done with this. So quickly just type in the name and hit done and then click OK and it's in your sources now. So now you go to file manager uh, or actually settings in system and go to add-ons and then you got to install from a zip file and pick the one that you called fusion and begin here is where you should start so you click on that one and then you just go over to the hub wizard now the video hub wizard for me is the easiest way to set it up if you're a noob if you're a person who's not really proficient at setting up Cody this is the easiest way I found um, you know 
some dudes they have a million builds and you can experiment later uh, I've just found that that one has all the ones that I like now you go to programs and you go to program add-ons then you go configuration wizard and then once you're there you have to pick whatever OS you're running in this case we're running Android because this is Android TV uh, then you just click Android and then yes and configuration wizard does the rest it will configure it for you and when it's done you're done it's installed all of your uh, add-ons and all of your programs and configured them for you and now you can just go into there and start playing movies or television shows so I always go to people watching because that is the uh, one that you're guaranteed that that there are videos there um, so let's pick season four and episode one and it does take a little while to get all the sources I have this a little sped up because it does take a minute to gather all the information from all the servers and uh, so once it's done though then you pick the source that you want to select in this case I'm just gonna pick the first one and there it is and it's in 720p because that's the highest available that it has right now you will see other shows that have 1080p um, and if you had a 4k TV and there was 4k content you could actually play that also um, you'd have to have a really good network connection though but as you can see here this one's playing fine absolutely no stutter playing great Okay, so now let's go check out a movie. This one's called The Arrival. And once again, I have it a little sped up just to uh, save a little time. I'm going to pick the first one again. And there it is. It's playing well. No stutter. So that X Tegra X1 chip is doing its job and you know like I said you wanna you wanna use a hardwired connection I wouldn't stream anything above 720 uh, over wireless it's it probably would work depends on your wireless stuff but it always works best on the hardwire so as you can see this thing's playing perfect no stutter I skipped a little bit ahead and uh, as you can see this is 720 it's got a little information on the bottom left and as you can see it is playing perfect and you know uh, if you have a 4k television eventually there will be some more 4k sources but this thing plays 720p and 1080p perfect so if you have a 1080p television it's gonna work just fine for you all right let's play a little YouTube now um, I don't have the sound on right now uh, but that was my bad I just didn't hook out and out because it's going through HDMI so be advised if you're going to your monitor and it doesn't have speakers on it you have to go to an out and let's check out this youtuber right here and look at that it's playing YouTube just fine and dandy uh, in full screen and this is a 34 inch uh, monitor the ultra wide so it's playing it perfectly fine on there it's stretching it all out nice and uh, so YouTube works well the interface I had the tablet and the interface wasn't as good as this so the interface they did streamline it a little bit better and then if you just hit your home button you'll go right back to this screen So let's check out Netflix. Now my family absolutely loves Netflix. As you can see there were quite a few people on that list. 
Now, um, it's just like any other box. Netflix is going to look the same. But the beauty of this is if you have a 4K TV, you can play it all in 4K and it's going to look great and it's going to stream just fine because the chip isn't going to get overloaded. That's I've, I've had Android boxes in the past and you know that even with a fast connection they didn't play the higher um, grade video because it just couldn't handle it it couldn't process it so that's one of the reasons I got this device and one of the reasons I like this device is it doesn't seem to bog down when you're trying to do a higher grade of content Okay, we're out at Netflix now. Let's try Amazon Video. So Amazon's taking a little longer to load. And guess what? If you're a Prime member, then you have to set up your account on this device. So much like we did with going on the web page to enable the shield you have to do the same thing with Amazon um, and that will get you uh, logged into your account and this device register for the account so that you can stream movies but I do like the fact that it's it's all linked together so once you've done that it will remember your movies much like Netflix although I must say that Netflix seems to be a little bit faster on the playback and on the navigation through the screens so as you can see there it says uh, un after I go through here that it says prime member recommended movies now if you have HBO then you can play these HBO movies but if you don't then I want you to sign up so let's go to some free recommended movies and let's try daddy's home here so as you can see I'm clicking on it it takes a second to load compared to the Netflix version of it but it's still relatively fast and it's playing perfectly and this I believe is in 1080p because that's the highest the resolution of the monitor will go and or television Right, look good, nice and crisp. And as you can see there, it does say HD 1080p on the screen. Now I'm going to pause it here and then I'm going to jump ahead a little bit. Ocean to be a dad. As for me, so there you go. Didn't take too long to skip forward. And I love my Ford Flex. It treats me to a smooth ride. You know what? Didn't break the bank. Looks perfect. Room enough for the whole family. Playing back great. I love being a dad. This movie looks kind of funny. I'm gonna have to watch it later. So it's got a pretty good selection of movies on Amazon also. Not not the extent of Netflix, but they're coming up a lot better. So let's click on Iron Man real quick. It's one of my favorite movies. And let's just check out uh, the quality and the playback on that. Once again, it's in 1080p. So let's skip a little bit forward here. And there you go. It's pretty fast. I think the interface is pretty good. The only thing that I don't like about the remote, more so than the controller, is where they place the volume control. It's really easy to bump. Not that it's a big deal. It doesn't move that much up or down, but it's one of the things, since it's capacitive, it's really easy to just bump it. 
and change your volume. I would have preferred physical buttons. But other than that, the rest of the hardware is awesome. So just scrolling through here and looking at all the apps. Let's check out the games. So let's check out Asphalt 8. That's if it runs on your phone well it, it's definitely going to run on this well now keep in mind you are going to have to upload a lot of content on this thing so i sped that up it actually took quite a while and then you got to fill in your stuff and you get into your gameplay so this is one of my favorite games on the phone so i definitely wanted to see how it would be to experience it on a wide screen. And as you can see that the graphics are not groundbreaking, it's not super great, but you know, it's it's a fun game and the graphics are good and it's handling it with no problem. And as you can see, I'm a really good driver. I'm actually, I'm trying to figure out how to hit boost here. And since I, I didn't know which buttons to hit, I was trying all of them. And, you know, then getting used to the steering. And yes, I'm, I'm, I'm in second right now. And uh, I actually, oh, thought I was doing pretty good. Uh, okay, so I'm fifth. Oh. You know, let's let's try another game. Maybe I'm not so good at that game. And as you can see, there is just a ton of games now. You could you could tell when they say for members, that means that if you log into their service, which I believe is I don't know, 10, 11 bucks a month you would be able to stream those games uh, and then the other thing you can do is you can purchase games and they're actually not that much I, I, I looked at a couple and they were like six seven bucks and of course you have free games now this is a Pac-Man game 256 now I had never seen this game before so I decided to download it and try it And it takes a little bit to install it. In fact, I almost thought it was locked up for a second just because it, the loading screen was a little long on this game. There it goes. So it's kind of like a Pac-Man in sort of 3D at a tilt. And then what I didn't notice until I started playing it a little bit is there's like those little flashing matrix letters coming up on you. I believe if those hit you, you'll die. So I started to run from the letters. And, you know, it, it's pretty fun, though. It reminds me of uh, a, a, a retro game, but with a little twist on it. So this is one I can recommend. It's pretty fun. And since I think it, it never ends, you could just keep on going up and up and up. Oh yeah, a little strategy, a little strategy. I'm going to try to hit that arrow. Oh, I almost died. Oh, I died. Okay, not too good at this game. Either. That's all right. I didn't have to spend any money. And as you can see, there's just a ton of ton of free games too. And then if you want, and the way they categorize them now is a lot better than it used to be. Um, they used to have them kind of all scattered and hoity-toity and everywhere. And now, you know, 
they they have all the Batman games together, all the Final Fantasy, all the Tomb Raider games are together, um, and you can pick by genre or you know whether you want action or uh, you know. So that's pretty cool. I, I like that. Okay, everybody, here we go. Final thoughts time. So the NVIDIA Shield TV 2017 is a faster media server than anything else on the market. With the X1 chip and 3 gigs of RAM, it's not having any problem handling the load. Now, it's not perfect. Here are some of the things I don't like. The remote unit volume control. Since there are no physical buttons for volume, it's very easy to hit on accident. The unit has no rubber feet on the bottom, so it could slip off a shelf. It has no physical power button on the unit, and I like being able to power down or reboot manually. Not having a built-in browser. I don't want to have to sideload Chrome. Come on, Google. This is a Android TV. It should have Chrome pre-installed. Alrighty then. Now, here are some of the things I do like. The price. What? Okay, yes, it's not the cheapest, but you are getting a remote and the controller before you had to pay $50 for the remote on the 2015 model. So technically, it is cheaper. This thing looks sexy, if you can say that about tech. All green and black, and the controller looks like a piece of art. There is the fact that this thing streams like a champion. I tried Kodi, YouTube, Amazon, and Netflix. All perform flawlessly. Now I am a casual gamer, as you saw from my gameplay. But it is a nice plus. And getting Google Assistant, and also being able to add automation integration with smart things, is compelling. I will sideload more apps and doing some emulation testing on retro titles. So stay tuned for that. If you're thinking about an Android TV and like to game, this is a no-brainer. If you want to tie it into your smart things, then this is a good fit. But if you want just a streamer, this thing is too badass for you. Anyway, that's my video. Thanks for watching. I'm going to get the tech out of here. Please comment, like, or subscribe. Thanks for watching again.